Welcome to Who Won the Week, your weekly dose of sports and advertising. I'm Mike Shields of Next in Media. And I'm Matt Ulrich, media analyst at EDO, the TV outcomes company. Matt, I'm psyched to be here, but let's kind of explain to people at home, what are we doing here? What is this show? Each week, we're going to talk the latest action in, in live sports. This week, and for the next several, it's going to be the NFL. We've got a few other fun ideas, and we want to talk about media and advertising impact. Cool. So if you like talking about sports, but you also like, like nerding out about ratings and, and um, ROI, this is your show. It's, it's, it's probably threading a needle, but it's a, it's a pretty awesome audience. Um, what do you think of, you know, it was a mixed bag this weekend. I was shocked by a couple of the scores. You had San Francisco losing. Uh, you had Detroit getting crushed. Looks like, you know, the, the Sunday night game was another really good one. They've had a really, really good role. And, of course, you have Kansas City again, which is becoming like a media train. It's, it's almost reminding me of, I don't know, if, like the 90s Bulls, where it's a phenomenon that crosses over to like the well, well beyond the football fan base with this Taylor showing up at every game thing. It's pretty wild. But what, what, kind, of, what kind of games or what, what study out, stood out to you over the last couple of days of football? I feel like this week was the Chiefs are at the height of their power week because not only do they have this whole uh, the whole phenomenon, the Swift phenomenon, but this is probably the best the Chiefs have looked in a few years compared to the rest of the league. I think we had the Dolphins looking great, the Eagles looking great, the Niners looking great, and all those teams in certain ways have stumbled a bit. And the yeah. the Chiefs have a won reality s- check happening for everybody. Yeah, the Chiefs have won six in a row since they lost the opening game of the season against the Lions, who are also, we find out, a, a great team, except when they're playing the Ravens. Right, right, which was sh- kind of shocking. But you're right, the, chief, the Chiefs now almost look like they're, they're totally in control. Like yep. they're, they're, they're as good as they've been. They remind you of Golden State almost, to make another NBA analogy, um, a few years ago. But, yeah, they're, they're rolling. I'm, uh, I'm wondering, well, this Taylor thing is going to eventually end because she's got to go back on tour at some point. But um, they're, this train won't stop. It, it's... Uh, you know me, I love a, a love story, but this is getting a little bit much, but uh, they won't stop. Like, she cheers, she cheers for every touchdown like they've just won the Super Bowl. It's a little – it's getting out of control, but it is, it is wild, the spectacle, and you're, gonna, you're just going to see them. I think they're going to be on TV as – national television as much as possible for, from here on out. And then, you know, she cheers, and then it cuts to commercial, and what comes on? It's that Capital One ad, the Venture Card, where it also cross-promos for – the Eras Tour uh, film, which just uh, which just right. got released in some theaters, right? Which is she's making a killing. It's right. done really well right. last two weeks in a row. It's like the biggest concert movie ever. My wife went the other night. She had a fabulous time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and then speaking of ads, what what has stood out to you? I mean, I think that we've seen, you know, you're seeing a lot of the typical NFL advertisers. But we, we what what have you seen a lot of that you maybe might not expect or is really standing out so far? One advertiser that has popped for EDO is. The Farmer's Dog. The Farmer's Dog is it's a pet food subscription service. It's direct to consumer. It's online based, and they've been advertising at least once in every Sunday night football uh, game. So they advertised in Eagles Dolphins on Sunday, and what we've seen from the Farmer's Dog is a lot of experimentation with call to action. So they have at the end of their ad, which is filled with pets, it's like a really nice family scene. They have. You know, get 50% off your first order at thefarmersdog.com slash, and they've tried things like slash real food, slash football. They're trying a new call to action uh, this past week. So they're experimenting. And what we're seeing at EDO, and we measure brand in, branded engagement related to right. these ads, we're seeing huge spikes in search engagement uh, for the farmer's dog. And is that, it's not unusual for a you know, obviously lots of brands have calls to action and television, but you know, the NFL, it's not, it's, well, first of all, I think television is not necessarily the domain of DTC brands t- typically or historically. And then the NFL is like the still, still the ultimate mass reach product. Is this unusual, I guess, to see this kind of like, you know, using this vehicle to, to have a very specific and multifaceted calls to action. And do you, can you actually tell if either of these strategies are working better than one or the, one or the other? Well, I think these engagement metrics, they, they measure both curiosity and, and intent. And especially when you see this call to action, uh, the farmer's dog is, is going for that intent piece. And what we've seen at EDO is we take these search engagement spikes related to these ads, and six out of the top 15 ser- largest search engagement spikes related to non-movie ads 
it's a different kind of category, are for the farmer's dog this season on Sunday night football. So we are definitely seeing, and if you parse out those keywords, you can definitely get more of that intent versus curiosity piece. But it's, I mean, those ads are driving both. Yeah, and and it's, you know, if you've seen them, they are, they're kind of, they're calling you out like, oh, if you're a dog owner and you're giving your your dog the same old dry food, you're a bad person. But it'll be really interesting to see how this, you know, the DTC category has struggled on social media, like with a lot of the levers being changed. You'll see how this works for them on television because it's not a cheap campaign, certainly. Um, what about, you know, another thing that's you know, pivoting in a little bit, but it's a sports media issue that I'm interested in is the simulcast of Monday Night Football that I think was believe it was driven because of the strike. And you, you've got the games on ABC and ESPN, which is kind of odd, unusual. And then um, you've also had like the the carriage standoff with Disney and Charter. So it's, it's interesting. I don't know how this is a long term strategy, but what do you make of it? What are you seeing in terms of what are we seeing in viewership differences and engagement rates? And I think the quick summary of what Disney has done is they've added 10 additional Monday Night Football games to be simulcast on ABC. So not just ESPN and ESPN2, as we've seen in the past few years, but for the first time in over 15 years, all of these games will air on ABC. And what we have seen is with this broader reach of the ABC audience, beyond just the core NFL audience that's accessing this on, on ESPN, what we've seen is a is viewership has been up 33% during the past three weeks of Monday Night Football versus the previous season, same three weeks. So you're kind of holding constant for some of these matchup differences, and it really has to do with the reach of ABC and ESPN combined versus ESPN last year. And do we think, is this just the... A bigger audience on ABC because it's, it's the the folks that don't have cable. It's free, or it's is it broader? Is that is, is as simple as just is that as you know? The, there's just more availability of the games means bigger audience. I think it's availability, and it's also just the uh, anyone who's a big NFL fan is going to find these games wherever they air. But someone who is a more casual fan might be surfing different channels or thinking what's on ABC tonight, and they. They come, they stumble into the Monday Night Football game, and they stay there. And we've been seeing audiences stay there. And in terms of the engagement metrics, I think the the quickest way to summarize what we've been seeing at EDO, where we measure engagement rates, is we know there's there's larger reach, there's similar engagement rates across this broader audience. And what does that result in? That results in bigger impact for the advertisers buying Monday Night Football. And let me just give you one stat. It's uh, the an average advertiser airing in Monday Night Football right now across ABC and ESPN is getting 30% more advertising impact than the same weeks last year. Right. So in an, in an era where, you know, that linear audience is shrinking and it's harder to get those ad evals and GRPs, that's a huge win for both for all parties involved. Yeah, the core NFL audience is is probably audience-wise what these advertisers care most about. Right. But if you can keep engagement rates at least similar and reach a broader audience, then it feels like a win for for these advertisers. That's gravy. It'll be and, and as you pointed out, we know we, we're the even the, these Monday night games have been doing really well in the ratings, and they're actually beating baseball, which has got to got to be tough. There was a game seven this week. It'll be interesting to see if if the World Series has any impact on, on what's going on with with the rest of the year. But all right, Matt, we're just we're just about out of time here. Where where, where can folks learn more? Visit edo.com for the latest industry takes, um, success stories, top ads, and then EDO just rolled out a holiday TV outcomes report that everyone should check out, edo.com, for that. All right, sounds good. See you next week, Matt. See you, Mike.